Pride fam, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna talk about three tips for your sumo deadlift that are gonna drastically improve it. This is probably not something you've seen in other videos because we're gonna get into some really nuanced, um, nuanced details and I'm gonna actually provide you some examples of four lifters who I think do what we're talking about today really well. And this is actually inspired by a video Johnny Candido did where he briefly mentioned in his video, it was a Q&A where he was talking about leading with your back in the sumo. And this is something that I've kind of intuitively taught my lifters without using that, that terminology. And I kind of want to dive into the semantics about why this is important. And I also want to talk about shoulder position, lat position, hip position, and staying over the bar on the sumo deadlift. So guys, I want you to examine the top lifters whenever you're looking at technique. Now everyone's individual. So what I want to do today is talk about a spectrum of foundational technique. So what I mean by that is there's some foundation things that I think every sumo puller or every conventional puller should try to prescribe by, but then you alter uh, the scale of how much you do this with the individual in mind. So the, the three things we're going to talk about today is uh, extension in the back, like how tight and extended you get in the back. Some pullers pull a little bit more shoulders rounded, some pull really tight and overextended almost. Others are kind of in the middle. The second thing we want to talk about is hip position in the sumo deadlift. Um, some people get really, really open and spread and, and vertical in the sumo and others start a little bit more bent over and then eventually get there as they pull through. And then uh, there's kind of people in between. The third thing we're going to talk about is staying over the bar. This one actually is, there isn't a spectrum for this. There isn't a scale. Everyone should be directly over the bar when they pull sumo. It's very different than a conventional and I'll get into those semantics. So the four lifters I want you guys to take a look at who do this beautifully. We're going to use two examples on a deadlift bar and two examples on a stiff bar. Bryce Lewis and Johnny Candido, who this video is also inspired by, uh, both of them are USAPL lifters, uh, one in the 105s, the other in the 83s, and they both have phenomenal deadlifts, and they both have technique that display what we're talking about. What you'll notice with both of these lifters is they get very tight and extended in their, their back, they stay over the bar and they finish through with their back. So what you'll notice from a side view is they all get their chest kind of popped out beyond their delt. So they, they get their, their chest broad and shoulders long and down. And so when you see from a side view, you see this and you don't see this. Now a lot of people say, hey, that's obvious. Well, we're going to talk about the nuance of how much you should be doing that yourself. How, how extended do you get in your back and how much do you pop that chest out in your start position of the sumo deadlift. So they abide by kind of these three things we're going to speak about. The other two lifters I want you to take a look at is Steffi Cohen, who's probably the most patient sumo puller I've ever seen. She's incredibly proficient at the sumo pull, especially on a deadlift bar. The deadlift bar creates a lot of whip and instability, and that girl can just stay tight for literally seconds while she's breaking the floor with hundreds and hundreds of pounds well over her body weight, and she doesn't budge. And if anything, as she pulls into it, it's like she opens up more, she gets her chest broader, her back tighter, and she really stays extended. She also abides by these same cues, so she gets into a nice extended back position, her chest pops out beyond the delts, she leads with her back to finish. Her glutes obviously pull through but I think the the thing that Johnny mentioned in his video that I don't like is a lot of people try to cue you know squeezing the glutes under this is even something I've said in the past but that that should almost be a passive thought and that should be extremely easy to do if you maintain your back position and that's kind of the key of what we're talking about here is if the back gives even a little bit it's much harder to squeeze your glutes through and therefore you have to actively think about it and I think this is what slows lockouts down instead of just staying very rigid and thinking about maintaining your back position and leading with the back then it keeps everything neutral and extended and then the glutes have an easy time pulling through instead of having to fight out or re-extending the back along with those back extenders. So Steffi Cohen, phenomenal doing this. The last one's gonna be Yuri Belkin. And I'm using all four of these examples because they're all very similar, but they all do it a little bit differently. You'll notice Yuri Belkin also gets vertical, also opens up his hips, stays over the bar, gets kind of extended in his back, chest way beyond his delts, and he gets very vertical at the top. He really leans back with his pole. However, he's a little bit more shoulders rounded forward than say Steffi Cohen. They both get tight in the back. They both try to lead with their back and get upright. However, the amount they do it is slightly different from the individual, and this is what you need to understand. So whenever we're getting ready for sumo. Let's go over these tips individually. The first thing, babe, can you please come to the side for me? I got my girlfriend filming. She's being awesome, stopping her workout for me and helping me film. So I'm not a sumo puller. I know how to teach it. Uh, my hips can't take it. The second I do sumo pull, I get a pain. So I'm not very proficient at, at um, you know, doing the sumo itself. 
I pulled like 600 or something sumo, but I am proficient at teaching it. So what we want to do when we're getting into a sumo position is the first thing, I'm not going to talk about bracing or any of that. That's a video for another time. That once you've got all that down, your foot position down, your width down, all that good stuff, you always want to set up on the bar so your shoulders are back behind the chest. So in the start position, we should really see some good extension in the back and the chest popping out. So if you start kind of shoulders rounded forward where we can't see the chest and you really even just from here try to arch the back, you're going to pull and lose that position and when you try to pull through at the top, you're going to get sticky. We need to see the chest beyond the delts. Now this is very different though than pinning your shoulders back. That's a cue a lot of people use on the sumo deadlift. They try to really like squeeze their shoulders back. Watch my arm length when I do that. If I'm standing here and I pin the shoulders back, you see how my arms get shorter? Watch the hand. You see how that gets shorter? We don't want shorter, we want longer. This is something Bryce Lewis has talked about in a recent series on his Instagram. I would encourage you to go follow him. I'll put his name right here on the screen. Go follow Bryce. Um, he talks about getting long in the shoulders. So the key here is to get your shoulders really fucking long, get down to the bar, and get your chest beyond those shoulders through extension. And I think that's the key is we're almost trying to extend the back. We're not, we're not trying to go overextended, but we're trying to fight and bias almost a little bit of an extended position to pop that chest out. So it's not pinning the shoulders back and, and retracting, and, you know, getting the shrug of the traps. It's more just extending the back and making the arms long. So what I want you to think about is long arms and chest out. And that's how you're going to get set up. And you'll notice when Steffi Cohen breaks her deadlift off the floor, she fights to maintain that position. And especially when she's doing the pause deadlifts, you can see how she opens up and gets that chest expanded out even more. And then she gets really vertical. So from there, the other thing we need to do is stay over the bar. So conventional pulling, when we can pull conventional, when I break the floor, I really try to get behind the bar the whole time. Like I'm trying to do this, I'm exaggerating, but I'm basically trying to leverage myself back. As we're with the sumo pole, I'm out of shape, I'm out of breath from that. With the sumo pole, we want to stay over the bar. The shoulder and the scapula should be directly above the bar in the start position and throughout the entire range of motion until the very top. So right when the knee's clear, the arms should be directly over. You see Johnny Candido do this perfectly, and he said in that video, it did not come naturally, uh, naturally to him. He had to practice this over time, but the key for him is to get those quads to lock first. If you lean back too much, your hips and quads will end up firing at the same time, and they'll both lock. And this is inefficient for sumo pullers. We want to see the quads before the hips always. Now, how much is going to change dependent upon the lifter and their anthropometry, the length of their femurs, how much they rotate out, the length of their torso, the length of their arms, etc. So what we want to see, get into a nice long shoulder and arm, but extended back position over the bar. You're going to finish like that. Shoulders long, chest out. This is going to be the most rigid position. Now, how do we apply the individuality of these cues to the lifters themselves? What we want to do is examine the lifter and their strength dominances. My uh, lifter, Andrew Tang, who's a beast of a 19 year old, he, uh, he tends to be kind of in the middle of the spectrum. So when we were working with him this weekend, we discovered because he's been kind of training at a commercial gym, his techniques got a little lax over the last few weeks. And he's kind of been out of the mindset of powerlifting. He's been dealing with some life stress. And from that, he ended up having some real like big movement errors. And when we're training, we're noticing he was rounding over not focusing on that chest position and back position in the start of his deadlift. And this was causing him instability off the floor and he was breaking weights that should be flying up, but they were going slow and kind of unstable because of his back position and was screwing with his lockout. So what we did is kind of went to his back down sets and worked on getting him extended. Now, what we did on the first time around is we got him really extended and tight more than we ever have in the past. And what we found is that was just too slow. He lost a lot of power from his legs like this. And the problem with that is once you lose power, that's not a strong position. So for him, I kind of took like more of a Yuri Belkin kind of approach where we let his shoulders kind of round forward, but we got more extended in his back compared to like what he was originally doing for his top set. And this kind of had the best of both worlds. It had some speed and it had some tightness to his back. And it wasn't screwing with his uh, stability on the way up or his lockout. So the way to understand this is, I'm really out of shape, excuse me. 
The way to understand this is the longer you get your arms, the more leverage you have, and therefore you start at a higher position, the easier and faster the deadlift is off the floor. But that often screws with your lockout, especially on stability and how rounded over you get. So if you round your shoulders over a little bit, we have to maintain that position of chest being out. So someone like myself, I'm gonna bias more of a really tight back position. Other people might be more like this, but still have that chest out. And that slight little detail can go such a long way for changing your strength off the floor and how good your lockout is. And you have to kind of change, you know, what part of the spectrum you lie on with your technique based on what feels good to you. Now, the next thing we were talking about staying over the bar, that one, you're always gonna, everyone should stay over the bar as a sumo puller. That way the quads and hips finish at the correct times. The third thing is gonna be hip position. So um, now this one is kind of confusing because it depends on how wide you go and how much external rotation you have, how retroverted your hips are. But essentially everyone wants to open up more or at least maintain the position they created off the floor. You never wanna see the knees come in. And this goes hand in hand with the back. So what I see a lot of novices do is they try to rip into the deadlift as hard as they can. Well, what that ends up happening is the back folds a little bit and flexion always goes hand in hand with internal rotation. Whenever the back folds over, the knees are gonna come in a little bit. And likewise, whenever we extend the back, the knees are gonna go out a little bit. And this will equate to whether you stay tight on the lockout or whether you kind of get a faulty lockout and really screw yourself up. Now you're probably gonna be able to find someone who pulls really rounded over and they're like, oh, this person does well with it. That's probably just due to their individuality. The majority of top tier sumo pullers, regardless of their anatomy, kind of abide by these things I was mentioning today. So you wanna do the same thing. And in this case, we wanna focus on opening those hips up into the pole. You'll notice all the greatest pullers do this. Steffi does this really well. You can see it in that sumo pause video that I showed. Uh, you can also see this in Candido and Bryce. They're more maintain the hip position that they open up with and they just start a little bit more open in the hips. That's the other thing is you don't have to start extremely externally rotated. You can kind of start more in the quads and forward and then externally rotate as you go out to get more vertical as you go. But essentially the way to think about this and how to apply to you is the more you open up, the more demand it is on the quads, especially off the floor. So guys like Bryce Lewis and Candido, they have shorter femur lengths. They're really quad dominant. They can get away with starting a little bit more open and maintaining that. Other people got longer legs, like my girlfriend, she starts a little bit more knees forward and then opens up into the pole. You'll actually see her femur rotate outward, her hip rotate externally uh, as she kind of pulls through it. Same with Steffi Cohen. So you gotta, again, specify this to the individual. It's not always, hey, start really open and stay there. And it's also not just open up more as you go. You have to apply it to the individual. That's pretty much it, guys. I'm tired, I gotta finish the rest of my workout. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave some comments down below. If you have any questions, shoot them there. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.